ghosts of Alcatraz Island, California. Alcatraz Island, with its centuries-old history from ancient Native Americans to Fort Alcatraz and military barracks as well as its service, most often known as one of the harshest federal prisons in the country. Alcatraz, often called a portal to another dimension, is filled with the energy of those who came to the rock and seemingly never left it. Tales and legends about the island have been circulating for several centuries since the time of the first visitors. Initially, Native Americans believed that the island was inhabited by evil spirits. Today, these spirits, which continue to hide in the shadows of the often fog-enshrouded island, have been heard, seen and felt by both staff and many visitors to Alcatraz. It is said that within these historic walls, especially near the dungeon, sounds of male voices, screams, whistles, the clanging of metal doors and terrifying shrieks can be heard. While the island served as a federal prison, Several guards reported unusual events, including sounds of wailing and moaning, terrible smells, and a creature that was said to appear with glowing eyes. There were also other reports of ghostly prisoners and soldiers who appeared before the guards and their families living on the island. It is reported that even Warden Johnston, who did not believe in ghosts, once heard the sounds of a weeping woman when he was leading several guests on a tour of the prison. According to descriptions, the screams heard by the warden and guests emanated from within the walls of the dungeon. As soon as the weeping stopped, an icy wind swept through the group. Since the 1940s, ghosts have been observed at the site of the now burned down warden's house. During a Christmas party at Warden Johnston's house, several guards told a story about a ghostly man who suddenly appeared before them in a grey suit, a cap with a visor and sideburns. When the frightened guards stared at the apparition, the room suddenly became very cold and the fire in the stove went out. Less than a minute later, the spirit disappeared. It was often reported that the old lighthouse would suddenly appear on foggy nights accompanied by a creepy whistling sound and a flashing green light that slowly moved across the island. When the prison was still open, other guards reported hearing phantom cannons and gunshots accompanied by screams that were so real that they sent experienced guards to check thinking that the prisoners had somehow escaped and obtained weapons. Taking cover, the guards cautiously looked around and saw nothing. These incidents were never explained by anyone. Another frequently reported experience by the guards was the smell of smoke, which often came from the deserted laundry room as if something was burning. When they investigated, the black smoke was so thick that the guards had to leave the room. It is said that the infamous D block was and remains the most haunted block in the entire prison. Although initially built like the other prison blocks, the Bureau of Prisons allocated additional funds for a more secure D block after an escape attempt in 1939, in which Arthur Doc Barker was killed. D block, which became known as the treatment unit, consisted of 42 cells with varying degrees of restriction. All prisoners held in D block had no contact with the population. 36 cells were practically the same as the others, however the inmates were not allowed to work or go to the dining hall for food. They were allowed only one visit to the recreation yard and two showers a week and all food was served in the cells. Their only entertainment was reading materials approved by the prison. All these cells faced the Golden Gate Bridge, from where a cruel cold wind often blew. It is known that one guard working in D block turned on the air conditioner to make it even colder for those in the block. 
Five of the remaining six cells in D block were known as strip cells, but more often they were called the whole. These cells, intended for the most serious violators of prison rules, were located on the lower tier, the coldest place in the prison, and contained only a sink, toilet and a low-power light bulb that guards could turn off. The inmates' mattresses were taken away during the day. They were never allowed into the yard, the shower, and were not given reading materials. Inmates could be sentenced to 19 days of confinement in the prison, in complete isolation and in a state of constant boredom. A former guard who worked at the prison in the 1940s reported that guards often saw the ghostly presence of a person dressed in 19th century prison clothes walking down the corridor. Once when an inmate was locked in the hole, he immediately began screaming that someone with burning eyes was there with him. The ghostly 19th century inmate became such a joke among the guards that the inmate's screams about the attack were ignored. The inmate's screams continued all night, then suddenly changed to complete silence. When the guards checked the cell the next morning, the inmate was found dead with a terrified expression on his face and noticeable handprints on his throat. An autopsy showed that the strangulation was not self-inflicted. At that time, many believed that the inmate was strangled by a guard who had finally grown tired of the inmate's screams. Although an investigation was conducted, no one confessed. Most believed that the inmate was killed by the restless evil spirit of a 19th century inmate often seen wandering the corridors. Adding to the mystery, when the guards lined up the inmates for the daily count, there were too many in the line. At the end of the row appeared the recently strangled inmate. While everyone, both guards and inmates, watched in stunned silence, the ghostly figure disappeared. Today's visitors and staff often report cold spots in the corridors of D-Block, as well as sudden strong feelings. Cells 12 and 14D are the most active. It is often reported that cell 14D is almost 20 degrees colder than the other cells in the block. And many psychics have felt emotional impressions in the corners of the cells where, as is known, punished inmates suffered. These cells are so eerie that some park rangers refuse to go there alone. When authors Richard Weiner and Nancy Osborne, authors of the book Haunted House, made a trip to Alcatraz, they too felt creepy sensations in cell 14D. When the couple entered the cell with the park ranger, they all felt a strong vibration and tingling in their hands. Convinced that something or someone was with them, Osborne stated that she had never felt so much energy in one place. Michael Corey, co-author of the book Alcatraz with Ghosts, also described receiving psychic impressions when he visited cell 14D. Also experiencing tingling, he tells of how he saw a small man with a shaved head who told him that he had been beaten, had his legs broken and was left in solitary confinement. Another time, when famous ghost hunter Richard Sennett and a psychic spent the night in Alcatraz, Sennett locked himself in cell 12D, where it is said an evil spirit resided. When the steel door closed, the ghost hunter felt icy fingers wrap around his neck. Many believe that the C-block approach where inmates Bernard Coy Joseph Kretzer and Marvin Hubbard were killed during an escape attempt in 1946, is haunted by ghosts. Loud clanging sounds are often heard, which stop when the door opens and resume only after it closes. It is said that the laundry room in C Block also has an invisible presence. 
when a CBS television news team invited famous psychic Sylvia Brown along with former inmate Leon Thompson. Sylvia immediately encountered an invisible presence and strong impressions of violence in the laundry. When she described a tall man with a bald head and small beady eyes, Leon Thompson, a former inmate, stepped forward and said, I remember the butcher. He was a hitman for Murder Incorporated before they caught him. His name was Abi Maldowitz, but we called him the butcher. Another inmate killed him here in the laundry. Prison records confirmed that Maldowitz was killed by another inmate in the laundry room of C Block. When Al Capone was imprisoned in Alcatraz, he was placed in a cell located in the western part of B Block. Although the gangster was never allowed to have a musical instrument or radio, many reported the sound of a ghostly banjo playing in his cell. In 1992, Alcatraz was featured on the popular television program Sightings where several National Park Service employees confirmed the grim history of the prison. Among the stories told by the staff were unexplained bangs, running footsteps, unearthly screams, cell doors that mysteriously closed by themselves, moans, the clanking of chains and a constant feeling of being watched. Psychic investigator Peter James shared his impressions while walking through the prison. James reported hearing the voices of people who had gone mad and experienced violence, fear and pain. The stories of ghosts visiting Alcatraz Island have become so frequent that the legends have become as popular as the long history of the island itself. It seems that this prison for paranormal phenomena is destined to live up to its popular nickname, Helcatraz.